In this video, I want to talk about negative determinants. So, uh, when you are finding the determinant of a matrix, sometimes you'll find it's positive, sometimes you'll find it's negative, um, sometimes it's zero. Okay, and these are telling you different things. So you might be wondering, well, what does it mean if the matrix determinant is negative? Well, what we're going to do is going to do a little bit of investigation into this, just to kind of see what this really, this concept really means. So I've written down here three two by two matrices. Um, so you might immediately recognize by now what these types of matrices are and what they're going to do. Uh, you might not be so confident on doing that yet. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at and see what these matrices do to this unit square okay, that I've drawn. So I've given it um, the points 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, and 2, 1. And I've labelled the corners of the square A, B, C, D going around clockwise. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the determinant of each of these four matrices. So the determinant of A is equal to minus 1 times 1 take away 0 times 0. And so that would just be negative 1. The determinant of B is minus 1 times minus 1 take away 0 times 0. And that would just be 1. And for matrix C, the determinant of C is 2 times 2 take away 0 times 0. And so that's 4. So as you can see, one of these three is negative. Okay. So what we're going to now do is we're going to apply um, these matrices to the vertices of this square to see what happens and to see where they are mapped to. So the first one, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, is going to be applied to 1, 1, going around uh, clockwise here, so 1, 2, uh, 2, 2, and 2, 1. Okay, so what do we get? Well, minus 1, 0 times each of these will just give me the top row but the negative of those, so minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2. 0, 1 being applied to each of those will give me the bottom row, so 1, 2, 2, 1. So my new coordinates are negative 1, 1. So this point here, so there's negative 1. Uh, so that is my first coordinate A where that has been mapped to. So we'll call that A prime. Minus 1, 2 is my next one. So negative 1, 2, so up here. And so that is where B has been mapped to. And so we'll call that B prime. Then we've got negative 2, 2, which is going to be over here. Okay, and that's where C has been mapped to. And negative 2, 1 is this point here, and that's where D has been mapped to. And so this would be my new shape. So what you should be seeing, firstly, is that clearly it, this matrix represented a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is actually the orientation of the shape. And by that, I mean that what's happened is that I would be reading A, B, C, D going clockwise around here. But now I've got A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime going anti-clockwise. So the fact is that the reflection caused the reversal of the orientation of the vertices. So it reversed the direction, so from clockwise to anti-clockwise. And this is because the gradient, not gradient, the determinant of the matrix was negative. Okay, So the determinant of the matrix being negative actually changes the orientation of the vertices. And so you read them going around the other way. Now, it's important then to have a look at these two situations just to see that actually the orientation is maintained. OK, so let's get rid of that for the time being. OK, let's get rid of that and change that up. And we're going to change this. OK, so we've now got minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. 
So if we apply that matrix to our square, uh, minus 1, 0 times each of those, we'll get negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and 0 minus 1 multiplied by each of those, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1. So the point A is now at minus 1, minus 1, so somewhere here. And so that's A prime. Uh, B is at minus 1, t minus 2. So let's extend the y-axis down a little bit. OK, and that's B prime. C is now at minus 2, minus 2. So here, and that's C prime. And minus 2, minus 1 is where D now is. So that's D prime. So here is my square. So this has rotated my square round by 180 degrees about the origin. So it's rotated it round here. Now look at the orientation, how we're reading the coordinates. So A, B, C, D going clockwise. A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime going clockwise. So the rotation did not change the orientation of the vertices. And you can tell that straight from the determinant being positive rather than negative. Now, the last example here, 2002. Zero, zero, two. OK, so we'd be expecting that the orientation would maintain. OK, so if we apply this matrix, uh, we're going to get 2, 2, 4, 4, and 0, 2 multiplied by each of those, so 2, 4, 4, 2. So we've got 2, 2, so that point there, so that's where A has been mapped to, so that's A prime. Then we've got 2, 4, so somewhere up here. Right, let's change that. So that's 4. OK, so that's now um, B prime, isn't it? OK, then we've got 4, 4, which is going to be over here. And that's C prime. Four, and then four two, uh, which is here, and that's D prime. It's also nice to see from this that not only is it clearly maintaining the orientation A prime B prime C prime D prime going round clockwise, but also clearly that the area was one. It's now been applied. Uh, the area was one. A matrix with the term four has been applied to it. And so you've now got four times the area, OK? And so, yes, the determinant here was negative, so it changed the orientation, whereas these two didn't change the orientation because the area, or sorry, the determinant was positive.